was something that I thought, you know, let me explore this. Let me see if there's something there to be said that hasn't been said. Um, you know, I wasn't caught up in the nostalgia of it. I didn't want to go, I didn't necessarily want to go back and recreate past glories. You know, what new can be said? Um, and I think we came up with some, some fresh ideas. The one idea that did propel me was this idea of the Terminator evolving to a new level that we haven't seen before. And by the Terminator, I mean not the new guy, who is obviously a, a new creation, new powers, that sort of thing, but the Terminator we know and love, which is Arnold's Terminator, the T-800. Now, he's a character that just keeps coming back, you know, relentlessly, as this kind of phoenix, you know, you destroy him and he comes back. But it, obviously it's a different one, right? So, so you have to buy into this conceit that there are a number of identical Arnold-based Terminator T-800s from the Skynet future that are sent back through time to do various missions. And to see how they each turn out differently, to me, was kind of intriguing. So one is programmed to kill remorseless, relentless. This was the first guy, obviously. No conscience, nothing. The blankness, the blankness of his affect, completely inhuman, even though he's meant to be an infiltrator, which is the big joke of the whole thing, because Arnold doesn't exactly blend, you know. Then you've got the one that's, that's designed, that's programmed for good. He's not innately good, He's programmed to be good. He doesn't even really want to be good. He'd rather kill people because it's simpler, and he's told not to, and he kind of resists it. And that's kind of, there's a little kind of ironic dark humor in, in, in movie two around that idea. But what happens if you leave a Terminator with his learning computer, with his neural network uh, CPU, just with no mission and no purpose, awash in human society for two and a half decades. What happens to that guy? To me, that was interesting. You know, where does he wind up? His job is to try to study, try to mimic human behavior to the extent possible, to parrot the way people speak, to learn. We saw it right in the first film, you know, the guys, guys yelling at him through the door of the hotel room, you know, and he's got a number of answers and he chooses one and he says it and it works. The guy goes away. You know, we see him learning. It's kind of an intriguing idea. So I thought, let's follow that guy. I would submit that Sarah Connor is not just one of the first great action heroes, that nobody has really lived up to that since then. There are, there are actresses that have done the physicality that she did, certainly. But the nuanced, dark, crazy, tortured, complex character... The performance that she gave in movie two, coupled with her physicality, which is what I think stunned everybody, and the things that she got to do, the competence, the clarity of her, of her action, I don't think anybody's done that since. So, of course, we want to see her come back, you know. Now, Linda had to think twice about whether she wanted to try to compete with that, you know, 25-year earlier version of herself now at the age of, I don't want to say, 60-something, 60 60-plus. <laughs> 60 um, the thing that was intriguing for me was there are no prototypes for the character that she plays in Dark Fate in cinema as we know it. I'm sorry. You, you, I may be missing something, but show me the 60-something action hero female. The Rev-9 is just a bunch of writers sitting in a room talking about the things they want to see. <laughs> and I said, well, what if he had an endoskeleton with the liquid metal over the outside? And what if he fell off a motorcycle at 90 miles an hour and hit a chain link fence and all the liquid flew off? And all of a sudden there's an there's a, you know, endoskeleton standing there and he's still coming after you. That'd be cool. You know, well, that scene's not in the movie, but something very much like it is. And I think Tim said, well, what if it's not an accident? What if they can divide on purpose? One can take this car, one can go on foot, they can fight independently, they're in constant communication. So that's a more formidable foe. So that's the path that we, that we took. They can, they can divide by choice.